How many, how many people have met me before or heard me speak or heard Belinda speak? Two people. Only, oh, okay, a few of you. Okay, good. Awesome. So good. Will you forgive me for lining people up and, and, and stretching you guys a bit this morning? Is that okay? I'll be released from that. That was the Lord. God's doing some amazing stuff in the house this morning. And, and I love it when God wrecks a service. I really do. I love the, the presence in here this morning. This is a convergence. I'm going to speak a little bit more about, about what I feel like God's doing. I actually believe this is a sign. Um, I don't know if it's like this every week. I should have asked someone. But if it is, you guys are very, very blessed because it's, very, it's amazing in here. Something really exciting happening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the loop to stop for a moment and then I'm going to minister and then I'm going to put the loop back on because I like the loop. The loop's good. Exactly. Now my wife Belinda and my son Asher are here too. She's at the back. She's just waving. Hello. Everyone give Belinda a wave at the back. So good. And Asher. Asher's eight months old. So exciting. Now I've been... You can put me back down again. It's gone a bit funny. It's good. Yay. Gosh, a bit. Can you change that a tiny bit, the boominess, if, that, if that's cool? Is everyone doing well? Yeah. So good. I just kind of meander, like I'm a meanderer. I'll preach and I'll meander at the same time because I like to see what God's doing. God's doing some amazing things in here today. And I had an encounter with an angel when I came in here, and it was really a beautiful encounter. And I've seen this angel before. And, and when I walked in, I saw him and... and I really believe that this angel is, comes to bring the clarion call of God. How many of you know what a clarion call is? A, let me tell you. A clarion call is a call to action. It's a call to action. And there's a word that's circulating at the moment, um, well, predominantly that I'm speaking <laughs> at the different churches I'm going to in Australia. And I said, I said to God recently, I said, God, what's the word that I'm bringing in season? You know, sometimes you'll hear someone and they'll bring the same message from church to church. And, and you go, wow, why do they actually do that? They do that because that message is the message that God's speaking yeah. in the season. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so, so I asked him recently, I said, God, what, what message am I bringing? What's my message? And he said, Daryl, I want you to prepare my people for war. I want you to prepare my people for war. And I really believe that the angel that's here today is a cl it brings a clarion call, preparing people for war, calling people to action. And, and isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna, we're going to do a little bit more ministry in, in a little while. Um, but I want to talk to you about an experience that I had um, where the Lord took me into an encounter where he gave me some keys for the body of Christ to prepare them for war. Now, how many of you know that if we're being called into war, that the end is that we've already won? Yes. You guys already know that, obviously, because you, you, so, you get so much great teaching here. But how many of you know that... So, how many people have ever had a, 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 a bad week? How many of you know as a Christian you can have a bad week? Yeah. How many know that as a Christian you can have a bad month? Yeah. Is it true or not? Yeah. Or a year? Now we're getting, to a sta uh, uh, we're getting to a stage now that I believe sincerely that when a Christian, and I use it, let's say this, when the sons of God have a bad week, that they are starting to become deeply encouraged by that reality. This is where I feel like we're coming into. Because a mature response to things going wrong is being able to see beyond the natural and see that there is something happening in the spirit that is trying to contend or work in opposition to what God is doing in them personally. This is really, really important. And this is I have a word specifically for this house, but I feel like I'm going to do it on Wednesday because on Wednesday I want to talk about what it looks like to occupy the gates of South Australia. What it looks like to occupy the gates of Adelaide, of South Australia. And there is a tangible reality. How many of you know that God doesn't say something without the intentionality of bringing his people up into an outworking practical reality of what he's saying? Yeah. 
See what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's not just going to say something, say, okay, see, and then you get another word in five years. Yes, we're going to argue by the gates, and everyone's really up. Yay! You know. So what I feel like, one of the things, one of my strengths is to give language to the realm of the spirit. Yeah. So you can actually see what's happening. It's probably my primary strength. So you can see what's happening, and you can take great courage in the course that God has got you on. And so I'm, well, I'm excited. I think, it's, uh, I think it's very exciting. So I, I will never prompt a response from you. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm very secure. And so, <laughs> so, so myself and Belinda were on staff for, I feel like I should tell you this because this is important. So myself and Belinda were on staff uh, at Jubilee for eight years and I was very happy. We bought a beautiful home and we were just beginning, uh, just starting to get established. My son Asher was born eight months ago. And um, I started to have things stir in my heart. And I was like, oh, what are you stirring, Lord? What's going on? And one night I had a dream. And in the dream I was with... Um, Todd Weatherly and I was with uh, Jeff Jansen and I got primarily a strategic download for a ministry that Jeff Jansen was working in. Now I just thought okay I've had a dream, it's a strategic dream, I'm going to email Jeff. So I emailed Jeff and then Jeff said look can you come and see me. Now this is all relevant for you guys so don't, don't switch off. So um, I got the, I had the dream I, I, he said, look, I'd love to see you. I feel like I have a word for you. I said, no problem. I'm going to fly down and see you. How many of you know it's worth getting on a plane if someone's got a prophetic word for you? It is. Treasure it more than anything else in the whole world. More than money, more than anything. And so, and so I flew down. But when I was standing at Sydney Airport, I, I stood at the, um, at the Qantas gate just before, you know how there's a sliding door, just before you go down, to the, down the tunnel to get on the plane. This is really important. Come with me. And so, and so I'm, stand, I'm standing there, and a translucent man comes and stands beside me. A translucent man came and stood beside me, and I knew it was the person of the Holy Spirit. I've never had him appear in that fashion before, ever. I've had angels appear to me many times. I've seen them. I've engaged with them. I've worked with them. But I've never had a translucent man appear to me or the Holy Spirit appear to me in that form. And he came and stood beside me. And he said this to me. He said, Daryl, you can get on that plane. And I said, yeah, of course. I'm at the airport. I bought my ticket. Of course I'm going to get on the plane. And he said, or you can choose not to. And I said, oh, wow, okay, that's an interesting. And then as soon as he said that, he showed me that I didn't have any bags on the plane. I just had hand baggage. And what he was doing is he was giving me an out. I was like, what do you mean? So he said, you can choose to get on the plane or you can choose not to. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And he said this, if you choose to get on the plane, everything in your life will change. And I thought, wow, everything in my life, wow, I, love, I really want that. I thought I might be invited to do some more crusades. I love winning souls, maybe in Africa. And um, I suddenly had a vision of my apartment. I was like, wow, I love my apartment. It's beautiful. It took us ages to, to work towards it. You mean my apartment will change? And then suddenly I saw myself walking to work every day. And I was like, wow, my walk to work will change? This is, this is really, really bizarre. And then I saw my family unit not in a negative sense, but just my family unit. And I was like, there'll be an effect to my family if I walk through here. And so I stood, and I had about five minutes, and I really felt the Lord give me some space to think and to make the choice. Yeah. Now, the thing is this, that I, I, I'm a risk taker. <laughs> I love change. How many people love change? Yeah. Oh, well, you're about to get some. <laughs> you have no idea. You think that I'm just coming to give you a nice little, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Come on, Darren. See, uh, we're going a lot deeper than you, than, than you probably know at this stage. That doesn't mean anything. But, but I just uh, I want to encourage you that there is no coincidence that I'm here today. So, so, um, so I think, oh, you know what? Let's just do it. So I go and get on the plane and... Uh, I remember as I'm getting on the plane that I'd had a prophetic word that was released on the Elijah list called a mega shift. And I had this vision where the Lord was standing at a crossroads or a train track crossing, let me say that, with a, his hand on one of the switch levers. You know, the switch levers that changes the track's direction. And on the switch lever was engraved in a beautiful, it was a beautiful a wooden lever, and on engraved through it was the word Rosh Hashanah. 
And I released the word and he said, and this is what he said to me, he said, on Rosh Hashanah, there will be a mega shift for the body of Christ. And I said, yeah, I received that. What a great word. Yeah, whatever. And I remember standing there and he said, you know that word was for you, don't you? So I fly down and I meet Jeff and we're sitting there and Jeff looks at me and he said, do you know that today's the first day of Rosh Hashanah? It's the 70th, 7th year since Joshua crossed over. I said, no way. And then suddenly the angel came and he said, this is what your next season of life is. Well, that was back in September, as all of you know. And in February, I moved to South Australia to come and live in Adelaide. I live in Tranmere now. Now, he, I'm not going to tell you the ins and outs of the word, but he said that the, he felt that the dream was significant because of the season that Australia is in. Yeah. And it required me to be in South Australia specifically to see that word, word outwork, but not, just, but not just that. Like my involvement, my, uh, the next part of me engaging with my scroll required me to be in South Australia. And so, and so, so I'm, so I'm, so I'm in the midst of this vision, and uh, sorry, so I'm hanging out with with Jeff, and all this stuff happens. Now, let me take you back three days. Three days before, I'm on my sofa, and I'm lying down on my sofa, and um, because I have a newborn baby, and you just do that sometimes, and so I'm sleeping on the sofa, and and suddenly I was taken out of my body, and I was brought into a room, and I walked into the room, and Bob Jones was in the room. Oh, wow, I've had an encounter with some, some of the cloud of witnesses before. How many people know who Bob Jones is? Have you heard of Bob Jones? Oh, okay, great. So Bob Jones, an incredible seer prophet, was in the room. And he gave me a date. And I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> thanks for that. That's awesome. So let me jump forward again. So these angels turned up. Jeff has given me this word of convergence. And he said this, because Bob Jones is my father or was my father in the spirit, and this word and your alignment is because of the billion soul harvest that's coming to the earth, the confirmation of this word will be that you will meet Bob Jones in the spirit. Wow. And I was like, I just met with Bob Jones wow. three days before. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what do I do? So I rang Belinda and I said, we're moving. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, we did move. And so, and so what's so exciting about that is is us being here. See, it's not about what I say over the next two days, even though I'm sure that will be really great too. <laughs> what it's about is the fact that we are here. And it's not about us. Mm -hmm. That's good, Darren. It's not. Yeah. It's actually, so what am I doing here today? What did Paul say that I do primarily? Do you remember? He, it was actually a great intro. I'm going to get you to write my, <laughs> re, re, refresh my website, actually. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But what did Paul say that we do? I, I'm a prophetic equipper. I'm an equipper. I'm an equipper. I'm here to equip. I've been sent to South Australia to equip the churches in South Australia. How crazy is that? And I'm like, and you're clapping because you, you don't even know what you're being equipped in yet. <laughs> I'm going to equip, equip you to really give. No, I'm just joking. I'm, I'm so joking. So the Lord spoke to me and he said, I said, what am I doing? And he said, you're preparing people for war. See, we are in a time, in a season of rapid advancement in the body of Christ. He says, the kingdom of God is forcefully advanced and the, and the, and the violent take hold, hold of it. How many of you know the, this scripture? We're like, yeah, we're forcefully advancing. I had a such a crap week. Yeah, we're forcefully advancing. Oh, my life's terrible. You know, I know I've worked with Christians for a long time and, and, <laughs> and I am one. <laughs> so, so, um, but what I want to say in that is this, that there is something stirring in us that we are starting to understand that we are actually born for war. How many of you know that's true? It, the, it, uh, I can't explain it any better, uh, any better than this, that, that Australia is at the forefront of so much of what God is doing. You know the spirit of revelation is being poured, poured out all over the earth, right? Well, how many of you know that Australia is a real, real hotspot on the earth? It is or it's not? How many of you know that's true? Yeah. Bill Johnson a few years ago said that when he was asked about all the places on the earth, and you would have heard him say this, he said, where, they said, where do you think the, the major hotspot is on earth? And he said, Australia. Mm -hmm. 
How many people live in Australia? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's cool. So you need to understand that you are in a war more than any other reality in this season. More than anything else in this season, you need to understand that you are in a war, but you have already run, won in Christ. Why? Because it actually gives language and context for what you're walking through. Good. Do you understand? And I'm not over, giving an overemphasis on war. Trust me, you, you'll see where I'm going. So I'm, yeah, you're at war, it's going to be a real struggle. No, I don't believe that at all. But I do believe that it's important for us to be able to line up to what God is saying specifically in order for us to be equipped and empowered, but to actually fall into or fall under or come into line with the grace that God has apportioned to us to be able to run the race that he's marked out for us personally. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is that cool? Yeah. See, what's the most important thing in this season? And I'll share with you the vision that God gave me about calling people to war. But the most important thing in this season, without a shadow of the doubt, uh, uh, shadow of a doubt, is number one, understanding the season that we're in, and number two, understanding what God is speaking to us personally within that season. I'm talking about the season that we are in in South Australia, the season that Australia is in. See, see, there are people here and you are called for great and magnificent and wonderful things. How many of you know that's true? Well, how many of you are all walking in the fullness of those right now? No, No, me neither. (laughs) But I can guarantee you that there there is such a quickening spirit being released at the moment that it's being released that whosoever will say yes will be upgraded in the spirit quicker than you could possibly imagine. Come on. Quicker than you could possibly imagine. I'm going to occupy gates. Okay. Occupying a gate is a really, really big deal. I'm a Christian and I've got all authority. No, you don't. How much authority do you actually have? Do you see what I'm saying? Let me tell you why, why that's not true. I was just in Tiananmen Square with, with uh, Todd Weatherly two weeks ago. So we're in China, we're walking along, and the Lord speaks to me and he says, if you pray at Tiananmen Square, your whole trip will change. And I was like, I don't want to pray at Tiananmen Square. I knew he was saying that you're actually out of your metron. Yeah. You're out of your spiritual metron. Yeah. And do you understand? And so I'm going there, and then we're walking along, and Todd won't mind me saying this, and we're walking along... And Todd starts going, we're next to the Tiananmen Square. I'm like, please, Lord, let him stop praying. (laughs) And suddenly he says, we take authority and government over this place right now. And I'm like, "Mm, don't say it. The air drops five degrees. A demon literally comes and stands in front of us. And Todd goes, okay. And I was like, let's go back to the hotel. (laughs) It's funny, hey? See, it says, everywhere your feet do tread, I will give unto you. But did God call out the territory first? Or did God call out the territory in that piece of scripture? He actually marks it out and then he says, everywhere your feet do tread, I will give unto you. See, what's really important at the moment is we understand what our metron is, but we understand what God's speaking to us about so that we can go with the flow in the spirit to be able to occupy the places that God is calling us to occupy. This is really, really important. But do you know what, uh, do you know, and I will explain, do you know what I'm doing? I'm actually, I'm leaning into what I want to speak about on Wednesday a little bit um, kind of marrying it in a bit. And you'll, you'll see, so you really have to come to both to get the, to get the full picture, um, which is important. So God is speaking this word out about South Australia. He's calling people in to equip the people, the body of Christ, to be able to move in the realms of the spirit and to occupy different places. Now, some of you are worried. You're saying, no, 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 we were given all authority uh, to... What are you talking about? Yeah, you were given all authority to cast out devils, to lay hands. So, so, and I'm not saying you don't have authority, don't get me wrong. But what I'm, let me give you another example of this. When Lakeland Revival was on in 2008, how many of you know, this is definitely a poignant message for people here. Lakeland Revival was on and Todd Bentley was heading up Lakeland in 2008. It was the largest televised revival of all time. You guys know that? It was actually the largest revival that's ever happened because of the media um, coverage. 
And so one time I went into Centennial Park in, in Sydney and I said, oh, there's a revival coming on. I'm going to intercede for the revival today. So I took half a day off college and I walked, into the, I walked into the park and I just said, okay, I come against all the witchcraft that's being prayed against the revival. Suddenly it was like I could hear crickets. I was like... God, where have you gone, God? Like, <laughs> I was feeling really empowered before I came and said that. And God took me into this distinct vision. And in the vision, he showed me on a horse. And I was in a full, I was in an army. I was, I was, I was part of the cavalry. I was ready to advance. And we were all together and we were all huddled. And then suddenly, there was this one horse went right out over into the enemy camp, into the enemy lines, and was completely isolated all by himself. And I was like, I'm a sitting duck. <laughs> I'm going to die. <laughs> and you know what the Lord said to me? Don't ever do that again. And he got my horse, turned it back around, and brought me back in again. See, the spirit realm is really, really, really real. And your words have more impact and more effect than you could possibly imagine. What you say really, really matters because of who you are. Yeah. Decree a thing and it will be established for you. It's a really, really massive deal. Your word, as Chris Vallotton says, your words create worlds. And God wants you in this season to co-labor with him to recreate the spiritual atmosphere of this state. I want to say city first because it's better. So we'll say city or let's say suburb. Let's say city. Let's say state. He wants you to co-labor with him to be able to recreate what Adelaide looks like. To be able to recreate what South Australia looks like. And I can tell you right now that South Australia has been marked by the Lord to become a world impacting city. To become a world impacting city, and we're all part of it. And I'm really, really excited about that. How many people are excited about that? It's really cool. So what, so, so what do we need to do then? Okay, so God is preparing us for war. So he said, Daryl, I want you to prepare my people for war. And suddenly I had this song in my, my head. And when I was younger, my granddad used to look after me when I was a, 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 young, a young nipper. And... Um, he was in the army. He was in World War II. And he used to sing army songs to me when I was in the, when I was in the car. And my, his favorite one was, pack up your troubles in your old kit bag. And he said, always, always. So I get in the car, he'd pick me up, and he'd go, pack all your troubles in your old kit bag. And I was like, yeah, you can sing it. But, so, I'm, so, I can, so I cannot get this song out of my head. And I go, gosh, this is, I'm having a nostalgic thing. Maybe God's bringing me uh, it's some healing um, <laughs> to do with my granddad. And suddenly, I'm, as I said, I'm in this profound encounter out of, the, out of the song. And this is the encounter I'm in. The Lord hands me a kit bag. And I said, well, what am I doing? What? And he said, everything, everything, you need to, everything you need to advance in your next season, I've put in this kit bag. Everything you need to advance in the next season, I've put in this kit bag for you. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And he said, but I'm not just giving it to you. I'm giving it to every one of my people. How many people want to know what was in the kit bag? Yes, okay, good. So the kit bag represents soldiers carried a kit bag. And every item that was in the kit bag that I'll talk about now was a spiritual impartation. It carried a spiritual reality. It was a word from the Lord that we needed to embrace and partake of in order for us to advance to the next level in God and actually take the ground that God is speaking to us. How many of you know that Australia is an advancing nation? Now, I come from Jubilee. Now, how many of you know who, who Dodds McCormack was? Peter Dodds. Okay, so he wrote Advance Australia Fair. Advanced Australia Fair was written in the building of Jubilee. Wow. He was an elder there. I prayed many, many times under the plaque that was his memorial plaque wow. because he was an elder and died in Waverley. I've met the angel that worked with him to write the anthem. The angel was called Harold. And now the angels works with Izzy and Finn when they write anthems and release them into the body of Christ. See, it was a mantle that was passed down. There's no coincidence that Finn and Izzy are in that church. Do you understand? Yeah. What are the two animals that are on the crest of Australia? 
emu and kangaroo. What are the only two animals in the world that cannot walk backwards? Wow. In the whole world? Surely there's another one. Mm -mm. Australia's, the, the prophetic decree over Australia is that you're an advancing people. See, we advance and then we show others how to advance. See, we're taking this ground. We're taking it. And there's nothing going to stop us. You know, I was, I, was recently in a, I was recently in Russia, and I will tell you what was in the kit bag, I haven't forgotten. I was recently in Russia, and I was sitting, uh, like really recently, like a few weeks ago, and I was sitting at a table, and I was sitting at a table with some of the most hardcore men and women of God I've ever met in my whole life. And I'm not just saying that. You know, sometimes someone goes, yeah, they were hardcore. I'm serious. I came under the fear of the Lord when I was with them. They were church planting in North Korea, and their congregations were being slaughtered. And they sat there. And the guy who heads it all up is a guy called Roman and a great guy in Vladivostok in Russia. And he leaned over the table to me and he said, we will take this world and no one will stop us. No demons, no uh, governments, no one will stop the move of God that's coming out of Russia. And I was like, I believe you and what can I do to help? <laughs> <laughs> See, there's a revelation of advancement that's coming back to the body that's calling us up into a posture of becoming a fearless army, becoming a warrior bride. And I know we've heard that a thousand times before, but I can guarantee you that we are in the season now where God is saying, whosoever will in the kingdom, if you want it, you can take it. How many, how many people here are tired of your finances being terrible? I, only a few of you, gosh. <laughs> the rest are millionaires. <laughs> How many of you know it's God's will to prosper you? How many people would like keys to actually seeing your finances flourish more than ever before? Yeah. Well, how many of you know that it's actually every person's duty to help fund the global church into all of the endeavors that God's calling her to? Yeah. Every person. How many of you know that every person is called to, oh, but you don't understand, I'm already stretched. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about giving out of what you've got now. I'm talking about giving out of your overflow. Having more than enough to be able to... Di how many people would like to be a distributor of wealth? Yes. Look how many people just... Do you know why you want that? Because that's actually part of your calling. Yeah. Romans 11.29, the gift and call of God are irrevocable. How crazy is that? I was in a church once and I said, God said, ask how many people believe that I've actually said to them that they're going to be millionaires. I asked, nearly half the church put their hand up. I was like, oh my goodness, this is real. It's real. So I'm, 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 you think I'm, so let me explain a little bit how I work. I'm not just speaking, I'm actually working the foundations of the house because we're about to come into something that is truly going to start to woo, and each person is going to start to run into even more of what God's called for them God called, called them to do do you see what I'm saying yeah. and it's going to blow your head off it doesn't look like the old thing one of the things that we've been talking a lot about is we've been talking about the new thing how many people have heard a word about the new thing a lot recently again well, Lana Vorsa released a word two weeks ago saying, I am doing... Uh, how many people know who Lana Vorsa is? She's a prolific prophet. Only one person. Okay, so she writes, she writes a lot of stuff on the Elijah list, and she's really um, a really strong up-and-coming voice, but she's more than up-and-coming now. A prophetic voice on the earth. So you can look her up, Lana Vorsa. She releases a word a day, and I know her personally. She's amazing. And she works all over America and with some amazing people. And, so, and she's Aussie. And so she wrote, released a word last week, and the Lord said, I don't want you to l read the word. I said, why? He said, because the word is what you're carrying. And I said, okay, now how many of you know if I read the word, I become an echo, and I need to be exactly. And so the Lord said, you can read the word just before you've, after you've prepared your message. Well, the word that Lana got was, I'm doing something completely new, and it doesn't look like anything you've ever experienced before. This is the word that God is speaking, sorry, over Gateway. Mm -hmm. This is the word that God is speaking over Adelaide. And this is the word that God is speaking over South Australia. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something completely new, and it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. This is a really big deal. Because what we're looking at when we're looking at revival, we're looking at, or we're looking at outpouring, we're looking at awakening, it doesn't look like anything. We've got nothing to compare it to because it's a combination and a culmination 
of everything that's happened in the past, and it's outworked into a new dispensation of time, which is the dispensation of time of the rising ecclesia or the sons of God, the mature we are sons, taking hold of everything that they're called to do and actually starting to administrate heaven's reality onto earth by way of their true supernatural identity in Christ. This is really, really important. And so it doesn't look like anything... It doesn't look like what it looked like before because the corporate understanding or the corporate level of revelation or revelatory understanding has never been where it's going to be now. Yeah. Part of it is the fulfillment of the book of Daniel. I won't talk about that now. But saying that there are things that are being held off for the last generation. We are truly in that season now. The revelation that's being poured out is actually tapping into the very, the very core of who we are as supernatural people and what we are able to do as, as being people born of God. You're born of spirit. Yeah. And so let me share with you what was in this thing. So the things that you need as we start to advance in this next season. And so God showed me all these things. And the first thing he showed me, and I want to I share it to you as, as, as part of a... Part of a a demonstration as well. The first thing that he showed me was he showed me a compass. Now, I didn't ever even share this word, but after I'd had the download of the word, someone in my congregation ran up to me at the end of the thing and he said, Daryl, Daryl, Daryl. I said, what's up? He said, oh, God told me I need to give you this compass. I said, great. Okay, it's so just a confirming word. So the first thing that God gave me in the kit bag, I pulled out the first thing was a compass. And I said, why a compass? And he said, well, how does it? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, what does a compass do? And I said, oh, it shows me the direction that I'm going. And he said, exactly. And then I saw the compass turn into lenses and glasses and then turn back into the compass. I said, oh, my goodness. You're giving people vision to see where they're going. This is a really big deal. And so I'm like, yeah, come on. Now, how many of you know that in, in Psalm 119, 105, what does it say? It's a very famous scripture. We should all know this. But it says, your word is a lamp unto my feet, which is your feet, and a light unto my path. Now, this is the scripture that I saw superimposed onto the compass. See, what God is doing is he's, enlighten, he's enlightening, enlightening us at the moment to be able to see where we're going. How many people, and that sounds random, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people could truly say right here, you know exactly where you're going? Because I certainly don't, and I'm a prophetic, and I, I, I can see, honestly, probably about a month. I can see broader sometimes to plan, but for me personally, and where I'm going, and my walking God, and I plan out, and we buy stuff, and we'll put, get houses, and I'm not saying that, but I'm talking about personal journey revelatory understanding. I, sometimes you see a, the lamp under my feet, you see the step in front of you, but a light under my path, are you kidding me? How many people, can, do you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying if you can see everything clearly, awesome, you're in, a great, you're in a great stage. But what I'm saying is I felt like the Lord was saying that the lid is coming off and people are going to be able to see further than they've ever seen before. Now, let me tell you this. This is really important. This is not because the enemy is then, or maybe it's partly because the enemy's being, the blindfolds are being taken off. But it's mostly because for most people, God has held off from releasing too much of the plan. Do you know why? God doesn't give you the whole plan because you will muck it up. He doesn't give me my plan because I'll muck it up. I try to do something in my own strength. I make too many commitments, too many agreements, and then I've balls it all up, and I have to... I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Um, and now... And I never swear, by the way. And now I have to... Now God then has to... He can do it, but he then has to realign me. And do you know what happens? Do you know what the cost is when that happens? Time. You lose time. See, there's only one thing that you have here. Really, time. God's teaching us to go outside time, and I'm sure you've had Jason, and I'll talk a little bit about going outside time and what it looks like to actually practically stretch time out. But I'll talk about that on Wednesday uh, to do with your scroll. But, but so, so what he wants to do is he, he want, he's going to lift the lid off. Are you ready? And the way that he's going to do that is, first of all, he's drawing everyone back to slow right down. Because if you're running and sprinting and he takes the lid off something, 
Because that's actually you feel like that's the season you're in, you will run into it and embrace way too many things that he's not calling you into. So part of your world, God is actually calling you to slow down in order that you can hear not just the direction but the strategy that he wants to implement in order for you to be able to move into the next, the next thing. And so this is really important. So, so the compass was the first thing. And the second thing that I saw was I saw a dual timepiece. Now, how many people have ever seen a watch that has two time zones on it? Yeah. yeah. So it's really simple. When I'm on a flight, if you're ever on a flight, an international flight, look at the flight attendants' watches. Nearly all of them will have a dual time watch because they have a time where they, because they're traveling so much, you need to stay grounded in one time. And I saw the Lord pull out a dual time piece. It had two time zones. And as he handed it to me, he hit a reset button. And the bottom, it was two, one stacked on top of the other. And the bottom watch lined up to the top watch. I said, oh, this is amazing. And he said, I said, what are you doing? And he said, you know what I'm doing? I said, you're synchronizing heaven's time zone to, heaven, uh, to earth's time zone. He said, exactly. My people are going to have an understanding of what heaven is doing in this season like never before. There's a rising of a revelational understanding of the sons of Ishika. Now, well, who were the sons of Ishika? The sons of Ishika, it says that they were, let me just read it to you in 1, 1 Chronicles 12, 32. Sons of Ishika, men who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do. So it's actually understanding the times and seasons under heaven. So remember, these are all the things that we need as we're starting to advance. So second was, a, was, was, was the dual time piece. The next one was a piece of bread. I said, why, what is it about a piece of bread? And the Lord gave me this scripture from Matthew. He said, give us today our daily bread. And he said that the, the next season or this season of advancement, one of the requirements is that people seek me for daily bread. They seek me for their daily portion. And I had this vision of all of these scraps of bread everywhere. I said, what on earth is this? And he said, these are all the wasted daily portions that people never eat. See, God wants to speak to you every day. No, he doesn't. You don't understand. I'm in a season of silence. No, you're not. If you're in a training as a prophet, maybe, and you'll know about it, and you'll be like, actually, I don't talk to too many people about this. But God is, a, the Holy Spirit is an absolute chatterbox. He wants to talk to you all the time. And so if he wants to talk to you all the time, he wants to give you your daily bread. Why don't people get the daily bread? and I'm not rebuking anyone, I don't know, here, because we fill our life with so much junk, we can't hear him clearly. You don't understand. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Check Facebook. Oh, okay, do you get your daily word from Facebook? So maybe some of you do. It's working for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> so God is calling people up into this place of surrender in this season, but he's saying, yeah, yeah I surrender all. Really? What is he truly asking you to surrender? What is he asking you to cut off or fast? God's been very specific with me, particular things. And I'm now pursuing him and saying, God, what are the things that I can change in my world that will help me hear your voice more clearly? And you know, each of them is just a practical thing that I do. Getting up earlier in the morning, lazing about one particular thing, watching a movie that maybe isn't that good for my eye gates, and I'm not talking about anything too lewd or crude, I'm just talking about something that isn't edifying, watching too much Home and Away. <laughs> I said that in another church, and honestly, I got like a dagger thrown through the, in the spirit. And I literally said, who was that? And a lady put her hand up, and I was like, wow. See, God's, 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 God's touching those places in, in us that, aren't, that haven't been conducive to us hearing his voice clearly and being able to receive our daily bread. And you know that when you eat your bread, your eyes are enlightened. And that's why all of these items work together. The compass, the bread, all of them. Do you understand? Um, the next item, there's only two more, so bear with me. The next item I saw was a Swiss Army knife. And it was yellow, and I'm holding it now, because on my chair manifested a yellow Swiss Army knife, not close to this um, 
I always wondered why I had it. Some one day I was just worshipping and someone had just put a Swiss Army knife and I kept it forever. You know when those things you just keep and you go, God, you're speaking to me about that. Well, this is exactly why he was speaking to me about it. And the word ye uh, the, the colour yellow represents gifting in, for some people. That's how, well, I, and it says in the, in the word that the gifts and call of God are irrevocable. But I saw the army knife and the army knife was closed. And I felt the Lord say that in this next season, people are going to really find out what they can do. People are really going to be able to find out what they are able to do. And a Swiss Army knife has lots of different things that you use and you utilise to obviously do different things. And I feel like the Lord's saying that in this next season, you are really going to start to operate and start to fire in ways that you couldn't possibly imagine. And this is for you, the lady with the you there. What's your name? Yeah. Alicia. This is a word for you. So, so, so you've got so a yellow Swiss army knife. And so I'm like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. So what do you mean? And he said, some of the gifting that I've put in people, because your gift and call are completely closely linked. How many of you know that's true? Well, if you're not walking in the fullness of the call yet, how many of you know that the giftings aren't necessarily buzzing all around because they haven't been lined up to actually what you're called to do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we'll talk about finding your fit because that's a word over the over the season, uh, over the over the the state as well. So Swiss Army knife. Last one was a piece of paper, and the piece of paper was all crumpled up. But in on the piece of paper, it said this at the top. It said it said counselors, it said counselors, and then underneath it said friends, friends and counselors. I was like friends and counselors, and and I saw names and numbers written down on this piece of paper. And then suddenly the piece of paper turned into a sharpening tool for sharpening a knife or sharpening a sword. I was like, oh my goodness. And the Lord spoke to me and he says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. I was like, wow, so these people are actually sharpeners. And he said, exactly. And I was like, wow, that's so, that's so interesting. And then it says this in, in the book of Proverbs. It talks about waging, actually, no, I'll use this one. In fi Proverbs 15, 22, and this is really important. It says this, without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counsellors, they succeed. See, we're in a season now where you need to choose your friends wisely. You need to choose the administration of your time wisely as God moves you into the next season and the next place that we're being moved into. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is really important because as Christians, we, get, we come in under a religious obligation to spend time with non-believers all the time and say, no, but this is what Jesus did. But what we, en we end up doing is we choose a lot of the time to invest our time into things that don't sharpen us, but instead they make us blunt. See, I spend a lot of time with non-believers, and I'm a pastor. I spend a lot of time with non-believers, but I spend more time with people that sharpen me or talk to people that sharpen me. And it's not just listening to podcasts or getting, listening to a message or coming to church on a Sunday. It's actually surrounding yourself with people that are more on fire than you are. It's a really, really big deal because you become, you know people say, you become like the five people that you spend most time with. You know that's scientifically, you can read all the studies about that. Go online and have a look. You actually become like the people that you hang out with. Isn't that crazy? Some of you are like, oh, I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Good. <laughs> Don't do it. Hang out with people that are seriously, crazily on fire. Now, you've been given all authority to overcome all the power of the enemy. Is that true? Yeah. You really do. You really do. But let me tell you this, that there is a process that God wants to take you through in order for you to be able to embrace the fullness of that reality in administrating the kingdom of heaven on earth. You guys are all right with that. Yeah. See, some of the stuff that we do, some of the stuff, so I saw this angel called Clarion. I said, hello. He had the trumpet and the clarion call. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm preparing people for war. How many people saw an angel in here this morning, a big one? Some people see in here. How many people saw it? Did anyone see it? OK, let me, let me do this then. How many people, if you were to feel where the angel was, was standing, where would he be standing? Someone be bold. Where do you feel that the angel could be standing? It's not me, sorry. <laughs> At the back? Has anyone else got any? This is, I just want to see, I want to awaken people at the front. I want to see where people are at. 
It, there you go. Awesome. So when I saw him, and he spent most of his time standing in this corner here, this is why I went and stood over there. Sorry? No, go on. Say what you can. What did you see? Tell me what you saw. Shout it out. Okay, this is really important. No, no, this is perfect. So she saw, so she, does everyone, can everyone hear this? It's really important. This is for all of us. She said she saw translucent, she saw light coming from the corner and translucent movement. Is that right? That's what, what did I say to you? Tell me what I said to you at the beginning. I said there was a translucent angel and I sat down and I was showing him the movement of the angel. See, why is that so important? And there's so much to talk about, but I'm going to finish. So why is it so important? Because angels only come on the word of the Lord. They don't just operate because they feel like it. Yeah. It says that angels hasten, one, Psalm 103.20, angels hasten to the word of God. So when there's an angel there, he's actually there, or they're actually there to minister to you personally. You know what I'm saying? So let me, let me, let me give you some... Yeah, let me give you some other stuff. So, so, so yeah, so the sharpening tool uh, was, the, was the last thing. And the, uh, no, not the last thing, second to last thing. And the last thing that I saw going in the kit bag was a pair of sneakers. And the pair of sneakers were called Brooks. They were Brooks running shoes. And I said, why are they Brooks running shoes? And the Lord said, because people are going to learn to refresh on the run. People are going to learn to refresh on the run. Brooks. So, these are all the things that are all stored up in this kit bag, ready for the body of Christ to move into the next season. One, not one thing is any less important than the other. These are all things, you probably need to listen back to this or read your notes back, but we've got a compass for direction to being able to see. We've got bread for the, for the receiving of the daily word. We've got a surrounding of counsellors or friends, people that sharpen you, that you can contact quickly on your phone. I saw phone numbers on that. We've got a dual timepiece that allows you to see and hear what heaven is doing. It's actually a connection into the prophetic uh, stream and realms. And then we've got a pair of running shoes that allow you to move fast, but also refresh as you move. And so these are the things that God is, God, is, God is empowering us in this season to be able to take more ground in South Australia. So I'm going to end by, by saying this. by saying, telling, I'm looking at my watch. My watch stopped like... On like three days ago, and it's quarter to one. And I'm like looking at it. I'm like, wow, I'm doing well for time. And I'm like, <laughs> see, those who ride on time will be right on time. I'm going to break this open on Wednesday. God is going to teach you in this next season to actually administrate the things of the Spirit, to actually ride on time, to allow your heavenly identity to infiltrate Earth in every sphere. That's where you are. And this is the thing you're probably not going to like as much, but I'm going to say it because I, because I love you. Stuff, stuff is going to stir and stuff is going to come up. Stuff is going to stir and stuff is going to come up. But God is maturing us or charging us to allow our responsibility to be different each time. Our responsibility to be different in this season than it has been, been in past seasons our ability to respond. See, some of you are going to have a really bad week. I feel like someone had a really bad week over here. How many people just had a rough week and it was just everything was going up and down? I really feel it strongly. It was you. Just stand up, both of you, whoever. Both of you. And just, and just put your hands out and just let, let the Lord minister for one second. Both of you, it's good. See, there was a reason that you had a bad week. I believe it wasn't natural. It was, it was spiritual. I believe it was because God was calling you up into a higher place of being able to see and engage in the things of the Spirit. And because he's calling you up, as he called you up, the enemy saw the angelic activity that was around you. He saw the increase, of, he saw a release of the new batch of the angelic. Went, why are the new batch being released to them? Get them, boys. But how many of you know that the angelic hosts and armies are far more dangerous <laughs> Than the, or, or, or stronger than the, than, the, than the demons. I mean, if you know, that's true. Yeah. And so God's coming to you in this season. Like there's a, I saw you when you were on the stage. What's your first name? Brittany. Brittany. Wow, there you go. 
And so I saw Brittany, um, I saw when you, were, when you were leading worship and the Lord highlighted you and said, you know she's just about to come up, don't you? And I said, I know. And then you came and stood beside me and I was like, wow, he's really actually, and I saw the place of your tent enlarging. And he says, enlarge the place of your tent, enlarge your habitation. And I felt like your sphere of influence, and you hear these words a lot, right? Watch what happens. The sphere of influence is starting to expand, and I felt like the Lord say, it's statewide and international. So it's going from, it's going from, from here to statewide and international. And it starts with, with, with in the spirit. It's a calling up in the spirit. And then as you're called up, you actually branch out and then influence comes. And you're going to start to feel it. And I saw that there was just a lot of warring going on around your head. That's what I saw. And there was loads of stuff going in your ears and out of your ears and like negative stuff and what am I doing and hopelessness and like... It's, you know, and you're laughing because that's exactly right, right? Because that's what God's doing. Because he's calling you up and the enemy goes, no! Just keep standing, just keep receiving. I remember one time I was in a, I was in a, an experience where I was about to get on stage and lead. I was honestly in this situation where I was going to, I was about to be, I was going to lead a thousand people to the Lord in Peru. And I got up and I was literally on the step and the enemy goes, you don't even believe in this stuff. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> what, are you even, what are you doing with your life? You could have been really rich salesman. Like, and I was like, wow, maybe I could have been a rich salesman. <laughs> and I'm literally on the stage. <laughs> See, the enemy hates what we're called to. And he knows better than we do how powerful we are and the calling on our life. See, God's bringing you up. And I felt like, and I don't, ever, I don't want to call something out that I, can't, that I can't underwrite, but sometimes you have to. And so, and I, I'm accountable to Paul as well, but I actually saw, um, and I, you hear this a lot, but sometimes it's, a, it's what it is. I actually saw that the Lord put a new mantle on you today. I really felt it. And I felt him say that you will feel the weight of it. And it's a new mantle weight. And I saw you, I saw like Izzy Digicini gets, uh, there's an angel that comes and work, works with her called Andrew. And he downloads songs and he downloads full songs and albums to her. And I felt like the Lord say, today I'm releasing an angel to you. There's actually an angel that's a, that releases songs that are proclamations and encouragements to the army in this next season. And I felt like you were actually going to get downloads of full albums from first song to song 12. Like I just saw it, did it, did it, did it, did it, album cover covers and everything and I felt like God say just do it just go for it like I saw the Nike tick over you and I felt like him is just saying to you just do it why are you laughing because he saw a Nike tick <laughs> when, when did he see that <laughs> there you go so so all it is is just confirming what God's saying do you hear what I'm saying so you can just sit down for a minute that's fine totally fine and what's your watch fit bit yes a bit fit 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 bit fit fit bit fit bit Fit. fit bit fit your perfect fit is coming in a bit that's what it is <laughs> your perfect fit is coming in a bit and in England in a bit just means very soon how many of you know that's true and that's what the Lord's saying your perfect fit is coming in a bit oh, I love that I'd love that word <laughs> how many people want your perfect fit is coming in a bit as a word just receive that that's a beautiful word because the word that myself and Belinda are releasing out over South Australia at the moment in churches is find your fit you're about to find your fit and so your perfect fit is coming in a bit I like that and, and you sir I saw, the, I saw dark glasses over you and so no don't worry it's, it's a good thing and I, I felt like why are you laughing I, I don't know you don't like dark glasses <laughs> I'm very relational when I minister. Like, I don't like to be weird. Do you know what I mean? Some people are like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Thus saith the Lord, you will wear dark glasses. <laughs> no, no. Um, I felt the Lord say, when the closer you come to the presence of God, the more bright his... It, it's nearly like your countenance changes. Does that make sense? Do you understand the concept of that? Do you want to stand up? What's your first name? I should get it, shouldn't I? Does the word McLaren mean anything to anyone? Okay, I've got a word about McLaren in a minute. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? It's a wine, wine drink. Oh, no way. Okay, that's the word I had for the, uh, this morning. So, okay, so, and so, what watch is, what watch is this? 
have no idea. Have you ever met anyone that can prophesy for watch before? I get more prophetic words of watches <laughs> than what brand. What does it say? Tell me what it says on it. 12.02. It says 12.02. But let me see. It's okay, everybody. <laughs> I can't see because my, my brand is... My mind is... Okay, so, so... And I don't just make stuff up. I don't like to. 50. Okay, so 50 is Jubilee. So there is a recompense coming for your family. So over the years, I felt like... One of the things is I feel like there's... What God has... What God has... Uh, what the enemy has taken away, God wants, to, God wants to release back to you. But I felt like there is something that's coming, and he's not going to give it to you all at once. He's going to give it to you incrementally. And I felt like him say that, that what it was, that there was a, a, a season coming where, where you were going to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But because of what you step into, your whole family is going to step into it as well. Now, is your family from South Australia? I see the Barossa. What's the Barossa mean to you? Yeah, does it, do you, I oh know it's wine country, do they live near there or are you connected to that at all? No. Um, no, that's all right, that's fine. What does the word Barossa mean, someone? Does it mean just wine? Maybe it's just this whole place is a wine place. They, they do like to drink. They do like to drink. Okay, well maybe God just says you, you're, you're going to enjoy to drink. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, all right. Okay. Heidi Baker's coming to a conference. Okay, but that's... Okay, so, so I feel like... Uh, this is what I feel. I feel like the Lord say, I'm giving you divine insight. I know that sounds like it's... like I feel like the Lord's saying, I'm giving you divine insight. Just put your hands up. Yeah. The Lord says that he's giving you divine insight and you're going to be able to see in ways that you've never been able to see before. You're going to be able to see in ways that you've never been able to see before. The dark glasses, I felt, represent your blind... Sometimes when someone's blind, they wear dark glasses. Have you ever seen that? To actually show people that they're, that they're blind. I felt like the Lord say that there have been blinders put on your eyes specifically. And you're laughing because I know that this is speaking to you, right? And I felt like him say you're in a season where the blinders are about to come off the eyes. But I felt when, the, when they come off the eyes, you're actually going to be able to see unlike ever before. And I felt like him say, I'm going to give you prophetic insight into situations, into persons that you had never believed that you were going to come into. And I get, the, I get a scripture from Jeremiah 1, which is Jeremiah basically had a voice, but he was able to, he, he said, Jeremiah, tell me what you see. And then he tells him what he sees, and then he gets commissioned to actually bring the word of the Lord. And I feel like what God's giving you is he's giving you divine insight into people and into situations that you're actually going to be able to see, and you're going to be able to administrate the word of the Lord to see the kingdoms of darkness plucked up and the kingdom of righteousness planted. And I know you feel that as well, don't you? So has God spoke to you about that before? What did he say? It's okay. 1 Corinthians 14, 25 is the scripture. It's the same scripture Branham had. He was able to see and get insight into people's lives. You can share. share, share what, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Someone say, um, I was going to bring people into a new realm of understanding. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, there you go. And so that speaks to you about. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. So he's coming into a new season of being able to see. And you're going to see like never before. But the blinders are coming off. And it's going, to be, it's going to be really, really wild. You're really going to get blessed. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. You can sit down. Awesome. Is everyone doing all right? Pinky Blinders. What, who's that? What is Pinky Blinders? Who watched Pinky Blinders recently? No, I'm serious. What? I don't even know what it is. You, you. Pinky Blinders. What does that mean to you? Peaky Blinders. Tell me, explain what that is. You watched it on TV recently? Yeah. On Thursday? Not long ago, but you watch Pe Peaky Blinders. I've got no idea what Peaky Blinders is. Do you want to just stand up for a second? Here's what it is. Okay. Okay, tell me about your watch. What brand is your watch? Sparkling. Now, how easy is it to get a word off a sparkling watch? You go, oh, yeah, you're like a princess and you sparkle. <laughs> no, Can you just read what the, what the brand is? Fossil. Sounds good. <laughs> See, put your hands in the air. Really easy. See, those things that have been laid dormant in people's lives, you're going to call out. The Lord says, I've given you a voice to proclaim those things that are not as though they were. See, if some things in, our, in people's lives, like they're calling sometimes, become fossilized. They literally just die. 
And the Lord says, I'm giving you a mandate to be able to call those things out over people and to bring them into a commissioning of the things that they're called to do. See, and I don't know what you do, but I see the word of the Lord on your mouth the same as this, but, but in a, a different measure, I see that the Lord is putting you in a place, you've already got a place of government in the spirit to actually be able to change things that are not in the right order and actually see them put into the right order. And part of it is actually one-on-one ministering to people, being able to call out the very things that they're called to do, and your word will actually not just activate them, but it will actually realign them and put them on the course that they're supposed to be running on. Does that sit with you? If it doesn't, I'll take it, because I like that. That's a, that's a, it's a really, really good word. And I felt, like, I felt like the Lord say, peaky blinder. Peaky, is that right? Why would he give me that word? I've no, I don't even know what it is. Peaky. And the Lord says that you are coming into a time where you are going to operate at peak performance. Not pink performance, but peak performance. And so there's something coming in your world where you are actually going to start to move and run and operate like you never have before because you're actually going to find your perfect fit in this next season in all the things, in, in the church, at home, and in the things you work. I see teaching on you. So do you teach or did you work at a school before? Okay, maybe it's because we're standing in a school. No, I don't we care for our disabled grandson. You care for your disabled grandson. But I see something... I see something um, but I see something teaching. Is there a teacher sitting beside you? Someone else a teacher? Sit behind. one behind. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Um, okay, but peaky, you're about to come into peak performance and it's your time. And just like McLaren is a racing car thing, I felt like the Lord say, be prepared, get ready for full throttle. Get ready for a full throttle because he's literally going to take the... Sometimes you, when you go around the racetrack, you, they don't go full throttle. But I feel like the Lord say, I'm about to show you what this machine can do, and the machine is your ministry. You really are going to receive it, and it's going to come really fast. And so Paul will have to mentor you in that. But that's cool. That's, that's, I'm sure. Awesome. Is everyone okay? Does anyone need to leave? You can leave if you need to. Okay, you need to leave. Go. It's good. Don't you like honesty? It's awesome. Okay. Oh, she's back. Awesome. So you've given the word about McLaren? Yeah, it's okay. So McLaren. So what does McLaren mean to someone? It's a wine region, is that right? No, McLaren to me mm-hmm. is our family line is the McLaren. Yes, Martin. yes, that's it. Yeah. And so that's a family line obviously in Scotland. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's a family name, it's a middle name yep. for the male, the yep. firstborn male yep. in our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the firstborn male in your family line is McLaren. But I had the word McLarenville. What does that mean? McLaren Vale? Yeah, what's that? Oh, McLaren Vale. Okay, McLaren Vale. Who, who works or lived in McLaren Vale over here? Who's been to McLaren Vale recently over here? McLaren Vale? You have? A few months ago. Did you visit there? What did you do there? You were on a wine tour in McLaren Vale in a few, a few months ago. Was it in September? You can think about it, it's fine. But there's, an, it might have been, that's okay. So McLaren Vale. See, the way, the way sometimes it works is things just unfold as you, as you sit in the spirit, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. And part of what we're doing today is actually giving you insight into what you can walk into and what you'll be able to walk into. How many of you know that's true? That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to finish. McLaren Vale, McLaren Vale, and your firstborn son... The firstborn son and the family line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is the generation so it's the firstborn generation? So McLaren Vale is Tartan from Yep, 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 yep. The family name. Yep. And it's carried in the firstborn son, the toddler. Wow, and it's Scottish. No, that's awesome. Okay, so how many people? How many people have Scottish? I'm going to give a, a Scottish lineage here. Okay, every oh flip, that's what it is. Okay, there you go. Okay, st- stand up if you've got Scottish lineage. Okay, good. Okay, takes it takes a while to get there, but if you get it, it's good. See, I had I had McLaren up. On my phone before the service, all I'm looking at is the origin of McLaren. I'm looking at the family name. I'm looking at the Scottish stuff on my phone. And sometimes you just don't put two and two together. You're like, oh, OK, that's fine. OK, really easy. This is really, really easy. 
simple. I have English, Irish, Indian, and German blood, a quarter of each exactly. Each of, my, each of my grandparents came from those places. And the Lord's been teaching me specifically about bloodlines and how it's important to understand some of the heritage and the bloodline of where you're from because you can actually start to receive some of the spirit of that nation because each nation has a particular calling. Okay? How many of you know that's true? Well, just because you, hail, you live in Australia doesn't mean... It, see, everything marries. So it doesn't mean that your, your inheritance and your heritage is predominantly from Australia just because you're born here. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It's actually to do with the family line and the bloodline that you've been born in and through. So how many people are a quarter Scottish here? Okay, a few. How many people are an eighth Scottish, roughly? Wow, more. Okay, this is awesome. Okay, so you guys have got this. Now, how many of you know what the Scottish are wild for, are known for, apart from whiskey, which is very good whiskey? They're brave, they're wild, the brave heart, the spirit, the Celtic warrior spirit. See, this is the word that God gave. And money, did you say money or something? How many people have ever been to Scotland before? It's so flipping cold. Are you allowed to say flipping? Okay. All right. This is what the Lord spoke to me yesterday, and I wrote it down at the bottom of my page for today. I said, he said, these people are being moulded into warriors. So, this is the bottom line. The bottom line is this. Part of this revelation or part of the understanding that God's releasing is he's actually doing an awakening to the reality of part of our supernatural identity in Christ, bold as lines, but actually part of our heritage and the heritage lines that we've come from. And the, I'm very Celtic, I'm very wild. Now, those people that stood up, do you like Irish music? A lot. No, I'm serious. And some of the people sitting down, they're like, oh, I hate Irish music, it's awful. <laughs> There's a reason you like Irish music. Do you know that that's true? How many people who are standing up thought of doing some Irish dancing one day? I'm serious. How many people? <laughs> there you go. Because my, my brother's an Irish dancer. It's Michael Flatley and all that. But you've actually... But, but let me explain something to you. The, that dance, the Irish dance, and I'm talking about Ireland specifically, but the Irish dance is actually a prophetic dance that is it's nearly like proclaiming that we're stamping on the enemy's head what do they call the main dance that came out of Ireland the main one it's called the river dance <laughs> so, but what I'm saying to what I'm saying in this place today is this receiving part of the warrior spirit and the wild Celtic flair from the Scottish heritage that you have in your blood right now. It's actually part of your blood. Starting to receive that is actually going to get you in touch even more so with part of who God has called you to be as part of the gift and call that he gave to you before you were even born. This is really, really important, and this is what we're going to talk about Wednesday, because on Wednesday we're going to be talking about scrolls and what a scroll is and how you start to unpack what the scroll is that God gave to you before you were born. This is really, really important. And so, and so in all of that, what I want to say is this, that for the Scottish people here, I can't, this is really important. Sometimes you're waiting for a prophetic word, right? You, I can't prophesy any more than that because the prophetic is often an invitation for you to partake in something that's already yours. Do you understand? Yeah. So in terms of a word, you're like, yeah, I wish you'd said something. I, I honestly have just said something to you because now it's actually up to you to engage that place and say, God, I want to release, show me a way to release more of that Celtic warrior crazy nutter spirit through me because that place is so bold and so radical and so born to advance. Show me how to do it. And God says, watch Braveheart. And you're like, okay, I'll watch Braveheart. Are you serious? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, William Wallace. <laughs> what spirit is on Braveheart? It's a warrior spirit. I watch movies all the time that activate me. Do you understand? Or he might say, I want you to go and buy some Scottish bagpipe music. How many of you know that when they marched, their bagpipes were out? The bagpipes are crazy. I, when I hear bagpipes, I think war. Someone, do you understand? So I'm saying, ask the Lord what he wants to 
and I'm telling you, you'll change. You start to do, listen to that or watch that once, twice, three times a week. Watch what starts to happen to you. You start to get bold. You're in the, you're in the place. You're in work. You're like, yeah. You know, you start to actually come into more of the fullness of who you are because what's laid dormant in the past is actually being re reawakened. Some of you had German blood. How many of you know? How many people here have German blood? Scottish German, and some of you are just German. Awesome. Do you know that German? The Germans are highly, highly organised. And if you redeem that in a kingdom, kingdom reality, it's actually a spirit of excellence. It's actually wisdom and excellence that the Germans carry. I drive a German car. Praise the Lord. And so, okay, that's fine. Everyone needs to get a German car. No, I'm just joking. So. So, but, but do you understand? So it's actually asking the Lord, tell me about the spirit, the German heritage that I have, and help me tap into that in a place of, 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 of redemption so that I can start to operate even more. So, uh, so one of the things, so what we'll do on Wednesdays, we're going to look at all that, but the predominant thing that we're going to be looking at on Wednesday is finding a fear, and it's this, and I want you to remember this. Strengthen your strengths, not your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths, not on your weaknesses. Because focusing on your weaknesses will, is literally going to waste your time. But focusing on your strengths is going to allow you to find your perfect fit. And then you will be married into the body so that other people can, can, can reinforce those places in your world where you're not as strong. How many of you know that? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? So before Wednesday, if you are going to come, please read 1 Corinthians 12 about the body so that you're up to speed with what I bring. And I'm just going to pray for you guys. So Father, we thank you for everything you did here today. Thank you that there was a lot more work done than it's... Than that meets the eye. Father, we thank you for every word that was from you. We thank you that it will take root and that it will produce. Thank you, Father, this is a producing house. And I thank you, God, that there is a season of breakthrough upon us and that we truly are never going to be the same as we embrace this brand new thing that you're releasing across this nation. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. awesome. Let's give Daryl a hand. Thank you very much. <laughs>